At the beginning of the year, we were looking at India and some early evidence suggested the country could be approaching herd immunity. All of that has changed very dramatically and very quickly. The situation very dire now. What's your take on what's gone wrong and how much of this deterioration is likely down to the new variant that's emerged there? Yeah, I mean, it's clearly a, a, a real issue associated with a number of different factors and demonstrates how there is no room for any of us in any country to be complacent. I mean, what you've got here is probably a perfect storm. It's a combination, I guess, of population density, of socioeconomic deprivation and of the um, generation of what appear to be more infectious variants of the virus. Um, and then superimposed on that, obviously, the um, the fact that all this sickness is simply overwhelming the healthcare system in India. And you talk about complacency playing a role here, and it's notable that this week we have seen some action taken by the UK government, by the US government to restrict travel uh, from India. But do you think that countries around the world are being complacent when it comes to the risks associated with the new variant that's emerged in India? I think one of the big problems with all this issue is that is knowing where these variants are. So you have to have the technology, the capacity for this so-called genomic surveillance. For instance, India is only sequencing around 1% of all the positive cases. So we don't really know, we don't know from many other countries where these viruses are and where they're going. And that's a real issue at the moment. So I think one of the one of the things we all need to think about is how do we improve genomic surveillance? And we also have to recognise that those countries that have done best throughout the pandemic have had very, very strict border controls, something that many countries, in U including, dare I say, at the UK, have been somewhat lax about. Mm. I actually want to pick up on that point because if you look at the, I think there are about 100 cases so far in, in the UK of the Indian variant, and almost all of them can be traced back to travel, less community transmission. So clearly, if there had been a, a quarantine or, or if India had been on the uh, red list, then that wouldn't have happened. Do you think that that is a template for how the UK government should make decisions in general and should just apply a mandated quarantine to every single traveler coming into the country? I mean, that's an extreme view, but some of us really think that that might be the way to go. It's very difficult when you start this, uh, you know, having different countries on different lists. So we've got this, this green, amber, red thing. And what criteria to use? And how do you stop uh, transmission in crowded spaces, particularly in, in hubs where people are traveling through airports? It's really very difficult. And unless you've got a really good system for checking whether people are positive using gold standard PCR tests before they travel and then mandate quarantine when they arrive in the country, it's very, very difficult to contain the spread of these variants. And as you mentioned, there are just over 100 cases of the Indian variant currently detected in the UK. But I wouldn't be surprised actually if the levels of infection with that variant are more than 10 times that once we start looking in more detail. Well, what do we know about the variant itself? I've read that some people are calling it the double mutation variant, which, which sounds very scary, but what do we know about its resistance to the vaccines, for example? Yeah, well, we, we actually don't know that much, in, but we're, we're looking at it by analogy with the changes that we've seen in other viruses. It is a bit naughty in a way to call it a double mutant because most of the variants that have been detected, most of the variants that are generated, um, which are, you know, these are being generated all the while, have many, many changes. The reference to double mutation highlights a concern about this particular variant in India because it has two changes that will both contribute, we believe, by analogy with other variants, to increased infectiousness. But just as, if not more important, is the fact that both those changes together are likely to compound the problem that we believe will occur in terms of vaccine resistance. So it looks like this variant will be more resistant to current vaccines, not totally resistant, but more resistant. And it's that factor, that, that issue that's being currently examined in various laboratories around the world, analyzing that. You can do that in, in a wet lab, you can study that type of thing. But the, the worry is that it is going to be more resistant to the protective immunity that is induced by current vaccines.